Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video in my memory series for you, where I share my personal story of playing World of Warcraft way back in the day. It's been a couple of months since the last one. This is part 6, and in the last one, I talked about my times in the Molten Core, and we talked about PvP a bit as well. I also officially made the switch from Paladin to Rogue because I got tired of buffing, and we also just killed Regnaros for the first time by the skin of our teeth. It took a while, but we got there. Before we move on to the Blackwing Lair though, we should talk about Anixia's Lair, which was the other launch raid. Anixia was just a single boss raid, as you know, still definitely tough at the time, but a good opportunity to pick up some quick loot if we could get her on farm, which would definitely help with the Molten Core. We killed her way before Ragnaros, as you would imagine, but it still took us quite a while because of the lengthy attunement chain. All the while we were clearing through the Molten Core, we were tasked with completing this attunement. The chain itself was pretty ridiculous. I actually have a whole video about it. It was different for each side, but for the Alliance, it involved a lot of globe trotting, and to sum it up, you basically just... Actually, you know what? I'm not glossing through this chain. I had to go through it, so you do too. You had to pick up a quest in the Burning Steps, kill some Dragonkin, deliver a letter to Lakeshire, deliver a letter to Stormwind, take another letter to Lakeshire, return to the Burning Steps, travel across the zone to another NPC to try to find the location of a dude named Marshall Windsor, go to the Blackrock Depths, kill the boss that drops a cell key, find the right cell, talk to Windsor, Return to the Burning Steps, return to the Blackrock Depths, kill Trash until you find a note, take the note to Windsor, and from here, you had to kill some bosses within the dungeon. But to reach them, you needed, you guessed it, a key. Where did you get this key? Well, you had to die and find a ghost outside of the dungeon, accept his quest, return to the Blackrock Depths, go through the arena event, make your way to the Hall of Crafting, loot a hammer, put the hammer in a statue, also within the dungeon, get the key, kill those two bosses, return to Windsor, break them out of jail, return to Stormwind, wreck Prestor's crap, cross the Great Sea to Winter Spring and Kalimdor, find an NPC there named Hala on top of a mountain, and from here you need to go to the upper Blackrock Spire to kill the final boss there, General Dracosath, and loot his blood. This place required a key though, and this also had its own quest chain entirely. You had to pick up the unadorned Seal of Ascension from the trash in the lower Blackrock Spire, find a hidden NPC within the dungeon on a ledge at the end of a hidden pathway, obviously, collect three gems, which dropped from three different bosses in the raid. Only one person could loot each gem, and they didn't always drop. Travel across the world once more to the Dustwallow Marsh Zone, find an elite drake named Ember Strife, mind control him and use his breath to forge a ring called the Seal of Ascension, zone into the upper Blackrock Spire and kill Dracosath, loot his blood, return to Hala in Winter Spring, and she gives you the Drakefire amulet, and finally you can zone into Anixia's lair. Well, getting 40 people to do this was no easy feat, and my guild would have us work on this whenever we weren't raiding the Molten Core. And it may not sound like it, but I actually quite enjoyed the chain as a whole. It was the first really epic one I did, I want to say, and it's one of the things that I wish they'd bring back in the current game. I eventually worked through this chain though, and would end up doing jailbreak several times for other guild members to help them out and try to get everyone ready for Anixia. So, quite the chain, but we did it. The most challenging part was getting our entire guild to do it, like I said, because Wowhead and YouTube weren't things yet. The best we had was what we had in-game, word of mouth, and ThoughtBot. When they release classic servers, someone should recreate the old ThoughtBot website just for the full package. I think we killed Anixia pretty quickly. She wasn't too tough as far as I recall. Unless you pull whelps, that is. 
The fight itself was pretty impressive at the time compared to the Molten Core. Having three different phases back then was a rarity, so it was pretty cool when she took to the skies and started incinerating everyone from above. Even to this day, no one fully knows exactly how her deep breath is triggered. A little fun fact though is that she targets invisible rabbits spread throughout the raid to determine where it goes. A cool developer trick that they shared a while ago. But those were the two big raids conquered. Like I mentioned in the last part, I did do a bit of PvP outside of raiding. At first, before battlegrounds were added, I just stuck with the famous Terra Mill vs. South Shore battles. Back then, the only way you could PvP was to find people out in the world, and the biggest hotspot for this was in the Hillsbred foothills in Terran Mill and South Shore. This was one of the first areas where the Alliance and Horde met up, and they had two hubs right across from each other, so I guess it just naturally became the go-to spot for PvP action. It was also before the honor system was in-game, and there really wasn't any actual benefit to PvPing other than just the fun of it. So, this hub was the place to be, and even on my PvE server, there was always a battle raging on. It was even recreated on the 10th anniversary in a battleground where you could get a special title. So, at first, this is where I got my PvP fix on my Paladin. I'd run into a ball of 50 Horde, Bubble, and Hearth back to South Shore just a minute away, and rejoin the fight. I also remember when Battlegrounds were first added. It was patch 1.5, and at first, to queue up, you had to go to the actual instance portal. There weren't any Battlemasters or anything like that yet. And initially, we only had the Altric Valley in the Altric Mountains, and the Warsong Gulch in Ashenvale for the Alliance, and the Barons for the Horde, I think. So, it was awesome to finally get some structured PvP where there's an actual scenario that you could win. The first one I queued up for was the Altric Valley, and something that sucked with my server was that the Alliance vastly outnumbered the Horde, so the queue times were ridiculous. I remember waiting at this portal with many others for hours, sort of like a crowded amusement park, except without the vomit, and when it was finally my turn, I zoned in, looked around, and zoned right through the portal next to me, not knowing that it was the exit. I was pretty pissed. I could still get into the same game though, because back then, the Altric Valley was ridiculous. There were a bunch more NPCs in general, including raid bosses that both sides could spawn, and it was very hard to push through or get pushed through. Fights just stalled at certain graveyards, and you'd have games that you'd be in for for several hours, you go to bed for the night, and the next day you get into the same game from the previous night. It was nuts. The Warsong Gulch could also go on forever, as there was no time limit. That was only added in the Wrath of the Lich King, and there was an exploit for both sides where the flag carrier could glitch through the wall above the flag cap, so you'd have games that would go on for hours or even days in there. As for the Arathi Basin, this wasn't added until a few months later in patch 1.7. This was the only one that was guaranteed to be winnable within a half hour or so. The only tough part was, again, for my server, we had way too many Alliance and too few Horde, so it could take hours to get into a match. This was before Crossrealm Anything, so while the community was still intact, this was one of the downsides. They only added that in the final vanilla patch, which was 1.12, which is what we're going to be getting in the official classic servers. So I did do quite a bit of PvP when I wasn't raiding. I've always loved it in World of Warcraft, and I only really stopped after the Cataclysm expansion. But in patch 1.6, we finally got the next raid, which was the Blackwing Lair. Nefarian, whom you saw in the Upper Blackrock Spire raid, got his own raid, and along with his Black Dragonflight, he seeks to destroy the world, so naturally, we gotta stop him. You needed to attune yourself to this raid as well before you could zone in. It was much more simple this time though, just requiring you to kill a guard outside of the Blackrock Spire, looting a quest starter, and then touching an orb behind the final boss, Dracosath. None of that globetrotting stuff, like with Anixia. The raid itself held 8 bosses total, and it was the next step up. 
The Molten Core, as great as it was for the introduction of raiding into World of Warcraft, most of the fights were pretty simple. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but the only one with multiple phases I want to say was Ragnaros. The Blackwing Lair improved upon this with fights such as Razor Gore, which started with the gauntlet of egg destroying and ad killing and kiting, and ended with the battle with Razor Gore himself. Velastraz, where you had infinite resources and it was a mad dash to finish him before you ran out of tanks. Lots of 1% wipes on this guy as I remember. These two bosses were quite infamous at the time and they destroyed many guilds. It was like jumping into the deep end. Going from the simpler fights from the Molten Core to the gauntlet known as Razor Gore and a huge gear check with Velastraz broke a lot of guilds and many that were pretty successful through MC and Anixia slowly faded away as they couldn't get past this brick wall. And later on, you of course had Chromagus, which would have randomly selected elements that you had to deal with, and Nefarian, who speaks for himself. Honestly though, I don't remember much out of this place. A common question I get with the series is, how do you remember all of this stuff? Well, the answer is, I don't. Remember, this is over the course of years, and at this point, I have maybe an hour or two worth of videos talking about all of this stuff. If I remembered everything, it would be a thousand part series, so all of what I've been telling you is a tiny fraction of what I remember with the game back then. I do also have some friends who played with me back then to reminisce with and bring up some old stuff that I forgot about, which is very helpful. But the Blackwing Lair is one of those places that I just don't remember too much of. Not really any interesting or funny stories that stand out to me. It was good, don't get me wrong. Just not too memorable for me, I guess. Maybe it's because it wasn't my first raid like the Molten Core. Your first time of anything is always going to be the most memorable, so that could be it, I guess. Although one thing I do remember, though, are the old Tier 2 sets before the revamp. I remember I got my Bloodfang hood before they redid the model. It just looked like a red Shadowcraft mask. At the time, I also had level 20 blue bracers equipped, and some guy made fun of me for having those along with the tier 2 headpiece. I think we duped it out in whispers for a bit. Here are the other sets though. As you can see, they needed that revamp pretty badly. I also remember how you had to have the Anixia skill cloak for the Nefarian fight. You crafted this from Scale's skin from Anixia, and he would do a breath when he goes into phase 2, and it would one-shot you if you didn't have it equipped. So, pretty interesting that she needed to have that raid on farm and get the cloak for all 40 members before you could finish this one. I kind of liked it. So, the Blackwing Lair. A good raid, but that's about all I remember. The next one was of course on Kiraj. Now, I have a few memories with this place, I'll tell you what. So much so that I think I'd like to save it for its own individual part. So, we've caught up a bit. I talked about the first three big raids, the Molten Core, Anixia, and the Blackwing Lair. We have PvP covered pretty thoroughly at this point. Really, all that's left for Vanilla is Ankiraj, Maxramus, and the wind down for the Burning Crusade and the launch event for that. The end of Vanilla. Thanks for watching, as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.